Uh, welcome to the Entrepreneur Station. So I'm Yuna Cho. The Entrepreneur Station will run a weekly video interview with the entrepreneurs uh, across the world. So um, uh, to uncover the secret how the entrepreneurs manage the uncertainty in their entrepreneur action. So today we have Mark Shaler, who is an entrepreneur, author, and also lecturer. Hi, Mark. Hey, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good. I really appreciate you, you for you joining. It's okay. Yeah. So I know you have several brands of your own. Could you uh, give a brief introduction of your company that you found? Yeah, sure. So um, I do lots of things. Firstly, I run a, um, a small innovation and eco design consultancy called APE. Mm -hmm. We help companies reduce the environmental impact of what they design mm -hmm. and change how they, how they set up and run their business model. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also help them innovate and develop new products and new services, do some trend analysis, um, try and map the future for them. You know, where, where's their market going to be in 5, 10, 15, mm -hmm. even 30 years' time? Mm -hmm. And I work with clients, or my clients have included um, people, really big companies like Amazon, um, oh. Samsung, Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. right the way down to lots and lots of really small entrepreneurs and small mm -hmm. businesses that want, that want help. So that's... That's number one. Yeah. Number two is I am a founding partner of the Do Lectures, mm -hmm. and the Do Lectures is like, um, but based in Wales and lots, lots better. Mm -hmm. It's normally quite wet. So the last two years it's been really dry. Mm -hmm. So we run a three-day um, series of lectures in Wales, and we run a three-day series of lectures in California, and okay. we run the same thing in Australia. Mm -hmm. And this year we're running Costa Rica as well. Yeah. And that's all about closing the gap between what you are and what, and what you could be. And so we, we try and work on ideas, innovation, uh, motivation. Sounds a bit cheesy, but it, it really works. Okay. Um, and then off the back of the Do Lectures, we run a number of workshops and training courses and other sort of business focused products. So that's number two. Mm -hmm. Number three, I run a, um, a small source company called um, Hot Smoky Bastard, where we make a smoked chili sauce, and that's good. That, that seems to be growing. And number four, I run a, um, I co run a project or a company called Rebel Cell, mm -hmm. where we set up um, startups inside large businesses. We try and take the best characteristics of startup not not the table tennis not the drinking tea not the sort of sat around chatting but but the speed the, the, the and, and the and the pace mm -hmm. um and the focus mm -hmm. that the startups have we take those three things and we apply them into large organizations so that, that's that's what i do okay great awesome so uh like uh so you have tried so many disruptive action as you founded several companies so far so my question is so now you are totally on the rails in uh what was your most significant or unforgettable un uncertainty that you have encountered and how did you manage that ambiguity oh it's a really good question yeah. So the biggest uncertainty, my, my biggest assumption mm -hmm. has been moving from being an eco design consultant only, so I only ever did eco design, moving from, from that, which I knew really well and everyone knew that's what I did and mm -hmm. I helped design packaging and product, moving from that into a more broad innovation space. And, and I got it wrong to start off with. Mm -hmm. I tried to sell mm -hmm. a different thing to the same people that I sold to before. Mm -hmm. That's not right. So I've had to learn I'm selling to different people mm -hmm. and, and I've had to change how I sell it. I'm not a natural salesperson, if I'm honest. Um, and so that's been the the big assumption. And the, it's taken me four years mm -hmm. to get to get through that. It's been really, really hard work. Right. Um, so that's been my biggest uncertainty. Yeah. Um, Rebel Cell, there is nothing uncertain. We, we hear all the time when we talk to clients, how do I think like a startup? Mm -hmm. How do I 
get into that that frame of thinking mm -hmm. that is all about um, change and innovation and, and there everyone all the big companies are really scared mm -hmm. of these little nimble startups and all the little nimble startups want to be like the big companies so something in between the two is is, is maybe ideal or, or behavior that steals from both of those both of those things is maybe ideal um and yeah that, that, that's the biggest uncertainty i've mm -hmm. faced well, great and like Oh, so at that time, when you perceived the uncertainty, how did you motivate yourself to act despite of that uncertainty? Great question. Um, if I didn't act, then I wouldn't, my children wouldn't have eaten dinner. Yeah. So I've had to, uh, genuinely, you know, yeah. it, it's, I, I act like a startup most days because yeah. if I don't bring work in, then no one gets fed at the end of the month um, mm -hmm. or the end of the day. And so... And so that's been the biggest motivator. Mm. Um, it's really easy to be incredibly well liked mm. and really busy. Mm, yeah. It's how you turn that into into income. It's how you make a, a business. Anyone can make great products and give them away. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's how you maximise their their value. And uh, so much of that mm -hmm. is down to your self perception. And so much of, of business is, a, is actually about knowing who you are and, mm -hmm. and, and what you can do and having the belief and the confidence mm -hmm. in, in, what, in what you are. That's huge, certainly in terms of selling services, mm -hmm. and maybe less so in, in selling products. Hmm. All right. It, it's, um, it's, it inspired me a lot. So maybe this sounds a bit weird, but my question is, if you can rate the uncertainty that you perceive at that moment, then how much would you give out of 10? Oh, God. Um, it varies because in the darkest hours, mm -hmm. it's 10. Okay, know? yeah. And, 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 when, and when you're working through it, it's probably a 1 or a 2. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 it varies. Um, some of the work we're doing with Rebel Cell, mm -hmm. we, we try and, and deal with this head on. So we, we talk to our clients about their riskiest assumption, mm -hmm. about identifying their riskiest assumption and, mm -hmm. and dealing with that really quickly. Mm -hmm. And we saw an example recently. We were working with one organization, mm -hmm. and they were developing a business model that was based on on whether somebody mm -hmm. would 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 partner with them yeah. for a new product and they spent hours working out their price mm -hmm. program they spent hours working out their branding yeah. their comms they looked at their manufacturing they looked at their profit mm -hmm. they didn't ask the partner until the week before mm -hmm. and then when the partner went nah it's not really what we do yeah now their immediate response was, oh, the whole thing is pointless and, uh, and we, we shouldn't go on. Uh, actually, that was the wrong decision. The right decision was to find another partner, yeah. which is what they did. Mm -hmm. but, but they only had five days to do it. They didn't mm -hmm. have five weeks to do it. And so identify your riskiest assumption first or the, or the thing that you're most concerned about and, and deal with that early. And the temptation is because it's difficult, the temptation is to put it off. Mm -hmm. and to look and to look at that last yeah got to do it straight up okay so you said that the uncertainty like you you just mentioned very good insight that the uncertainty keep changing according to the complexity of the issue according to the situation and sometimes sometimes you perceive the uncertainty too late sometimes yeah yeah so certain Mm -hmm. So it, there's loads of examples of this where, where companies have carried on doing what they've always done because it worked last year and it worked it worked before and yeah. and they, and they, they they put down the difficulty that they're in at the moment mm -hmm. to a, a a tricky spell mm -hmm. or to a piece of bad debt yeah. or to a product problem actually. The market's shifting. Markets are changing so yeah. fast now, mm -hmm. and, and we sit in a time that is more diverse and more. It's got more opportunity and more danger than than, than any other time in terms of in terms of co commerce mm -hmm. and, and more uncertainty. Yeah. Um, and to keep writing off uncertainties and, and and difficulties as blips is dangerous. Two of them, you've got a thing. One is not a thing. One is just bad luck. Two of them is a thing, and you need to respond to it really fast. Oh yeah. 
Okay, so my last, oh, so we have only two more questions. So the first is, so if you can rate, uh, do you think, do you believe you have more willingness to bear the uncertainty than known entrepreneurs, like generally? Well, that's interesting. That's a really good question. I, I think most entrepreneurs would see, it's a, it's a weird, let's just go back to the word, yeah. entrepreneur. Lots of people call themselves entrepreneurs because they've run two or three businesses or they've set up two or three businesses. Mm -hmm. that, that doesn't make you an entrepreneur. That makes you a successful businessman, mm -hmm. businesswoman. An entrepreneur is looking for opportunity at every yeah. stage. An entrepreneur mm -hmm. never stops hunting and observing. Mm -hmm. An entrepreneur's best friend is, mm -hmm. is change and uncertainty. Mm -hmm. So a true entrepreneur would just value mm -hmm. things as market stimulus or, 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 or stimulus for innovation. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I'm any different um, than any other entrepreneur. I mean, mm -hmm. um, maybe as I'm getting older, I'm mm -hmm. more risk averse. Yeah. And then at some point when you get really old mm -hmm. and, you, and you need to earn shitloads of money really quickly, mm -hmm. you get really risk um, embracing and, and, you, and you change your behavior yet again mm -hmm. so i don't think there's a difference between me and anybody else mm -hmm. okay. i think lots of people who would perceive themselves or define themselves as entrepreneurs who really aren't mm -hmm. and they are they're the ones that maybe don't see risk and uncertainty as opportunity hmm. very interesting interesting so yeah so the last question is could you share so i expect the prospective or early stage of the entrepreneur may see this channel to share their knowledge and the experience so could you let us know your top tip to how to motivate yourself and how to uh, manage the uncertainty in this disruptive environment okay so my tip is work out is work out what you care about Mm. And it's really old, but it's a really great example. And that's the Simon Sinek start with why. Mm -hmm. Begin to look at why why you exist. And I don't mean to make a profit. That's that that that'll happen if you do good things or if you do bad things. Mm -hmm. You can make a profit doing bad things. Start start out what the you know the, the thing that you believe in, and your why begins with mm -hmm. I believe or we we believe. And once you've worked out that, that, that's your purpose. And that purpose needs to be broad enough mm -hmm. so that you can go into different markets. So your why isn't to make the best pencil in the world. Mm -hmm. Your why is possibly to enable people to communicate more effectively mm -hmm. um, with their hands. You know, that, that, that's the, the kind of difference. Mm -hmm. Once you've got your why, yeah. that, that will fuel you. If people don't buy why. Mm -hmm do they by why you do it mm. and that will that will fuel you and that thing that will sustain you that's your that's your food for mm. for the innovation and the entrepreneurial process so that's the key thing how to keep you most, yourself most that's, that's the macro motivation the mm. micro motivation mm. has got to be about the belief in the thing that you're doing um mm. as being valuable mm -hmm. and, and i don't mean just money but i do mean money um, I mean, societally, really valuable. What What's it for? What value does it bring? If you die tomorrow, who's gonna Who's mm. gonna talk about what you've done, and how are they gonna talk about it? Mm. I don't mean that in an, in, an, in an ego way, but mm. but, but ego is really tricky, and it does yeah. weave in and out of things that that it shouldn't do. But I mean, what difference have you made? What you know, you can't be. You know, brilliant. When most people die, they don't. Mm -hmm. They don't sit on their deathbed and say, mm -hmm. "Wish I'd sold more briefcases in quarter seven, quarter seven, quarter four of two thousand and seven. They don't. Mm -hmm. They don't say that. They yeah. they talk about the, the, the big things that they've done or or not done. Mm -hmm. And so, having those big dreams and and, and those big aspirations, that's mm -hmm. what keeps you you going mm -hmm. um yes you have to earn money absolutely mm -hmm. yes your exit plan will always be to sell for multi-million mm -hmm. obviously but but that's not why people start this the, the best entrepreneurs start something mm -hmm. because because they want to fix something and, yeah. and that's motivation enough mm -hmm. great great 
So yeah, it was really nice to talk to you. I'm so happy to And you? Yeah, happy to hear about your experience and your stories. And 